Welcome to another episode of In The Zone. I am your host, Chris Broussard, and we got another tremendous episode for you. First of all, we did our sit-down interview with Danny Green of the San Antonio Spurs. We talked to him about the Spurs season, how they've been able to win despite the injuries, his own journey to the NBA, and of course, we get the scoop on the Kawhi Leonard situation, the meeting, and all that. We also, of course, have my man Jason McIntyre here for Knockdown J. And as always, we're going to hit you with a great top five. And since I sat down with Danny Green, he, of course, plays for one of the all-time great coaches in Greg Popovich. That got me to thinking, who are the best five coaches in NBA history? And at number five, I'm going with Lenny Wilkins. Lenny Wilkins, one of the few people in the world to ever be inducted into the NBA Hall of Fame as both a player and a coach. He did it as a coach because he's the second winningest coach of all time with over 1,130 victories. Then he also won a title, 1979, with the Seattle Supersonics. And check this out. There have been two teams in 38 years, the last 38 years of NBA history, to win a championship without a bona fide superstar or a guy who would be considered a top 50 player of all time. One of them was Lenny Wilkins, Seattle Supersonics teams. So he did a great job of coaching them. Also was great in Cleveland and Atlanta and some other places. Lenny Wilkins, fifth greatest coach of all time. At number four, the man, Pat Riley, coached the Lakers, the Knicks, the Miami Heat, has won five championships altogether, four with the Showtime Lakers of Magic Johnson and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and then 18 years after his last title with the Lakers, he leads the Miami Heat to a championship in 2006. Pat Riley showed his greatness when he left LA and went to the New York Knicks. Now in LA, he coached this glamorous, up and down, fast break style with Magic Johnson leading the way. Then he goes to New York and completely changes his coaching style and coaches the Knicks of Patrick Ewing to a hardcore, defense first, slow down type game that made them a top team in that era and a contender against Michael Jordan. So Pat Riley, can coach in many ways, and that's what makes him the fourth greatest coach of all time. At number three, Greg Popovich, San Antonio Spurs. This guy, similar to Pat Riley, can coach to the strengths of his players. When he had David Robinson and Tim Duncan, Twin Towers, we're going inside. When David Robinson gets older, they build it around Tim Duncan. When Tim Duncan gets older, Tony Parker and the pick and roll becomes the focal point of the team. When Parker gets over, they, they do a lot of ball movement. They shooting a lot of threes when they beat Miami in the finals. Then they get Kawhi Leonard to come of age. And LaMarcus Aldridge is a free agent. They go more ISO style. Greg Popovich adjusts to the strengths of his players. Oh, and he's also got five championships. He's also about to lead the Spurs to the playoffs for the 21st straight year. That's second longest streak in the NBA history. And then he's got 18 years. It's about to end this year, maybe, but 18 years of 50 or more wins. Longest streak in NBA history, Greg Popovich, number three. At number two, I'm going way back Red Arbach of the Boston Celtics. Look, this guy is an absolute legend. Led the Celtics to nine championships with Bill Russell leading the way. Great thing about Arbach too is that in that era where racism was just overt, he was a guy that didn't care whether you were a black player, white player, whatever. He was the first NBA coach to start five black players. He hired the first black coach, Bill Russell, who actually coached the Celtics to two championships himself. But Red Arbach, great innovator, was the first to create the six man. I mean, Red Arbach, second best coach of all time. And at number one, you know who it is. Phil Jackson, a bit of a strange guy, you know, with the zen and, 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 uh, and the smoking and all that stuff. 
but you can't take it away from him. The guy is a great coach. 11 championships, obviously, an NBA record. Now, everybody would say, well, of course, he had Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen and Shaq and Kobe, but here's the thing. The great Michael Jordan, the GOAT Michael Jordan, never won a championship without Phil Jackson. <laughs> Phil Jackson was great psychologically with players, really got them to perform to the best of their ability, got them to play the team basketball that was necessary to win championships. I know we had a lot of great talent, but a lot of other coaches had those players and have had great talent and have not been able to win championships, especially in the way he's done it. Three Pete's are hard to come by. Phil Jackson has three-peated three times, and then his other two championships were a repeat, as good as Popovich is, never th repeated. You know, so the ability to get your players to be dialed in, to be hungry, to play with a sense of urgency and want to win a championship after they've won one or two, that is a gift. Phil Jackson has it. That's why he's the best coach of all time. All right, then, look, I, I have to start out with uh, some NCAA stuff. Okay. Obviously, it's that time of year. You won a national championship. How do you compare winning an NCAA championship to an NBA championship? Very hard to compare. Um, two different styles of play, I guess, or the way the matchups and, you know, playoffs are set up. Yeah. Uh, NCAA, you know, if you have one bad game, you're out. Um, NBA, you know, it's a, it's a series, so yeah. you get an opportunity. Usually it's the best team during that series or during that time of year. Whoever's the healthiest and whoever's playing the best is probably going to win the series. And NCAA is the best team that night, you know, and um, that's why you see a lot of upsets, you know, Loyola yeah, making it to the yeah. Final Four, uh, UMBC, you know, beating top seeds. Um, this year was, I think, the year the, the underdog this year in the NCAA, but for NBA, you don't see many underdogs yeah. make it to the finals. It doesn't happen. Yeah. Now you stayed four years. You won it your senior year. Mm -hmm. What'd you gain from staying in college four years? Because we see so many guys that don't stay that long. Um, I think I matured um, a lot as a person, not just a player, but definitely as a player, more polished, um, understanding a lot, the game a lot better. Um, but as a person, just understanding how to be a professional, how to be an adult. You know, yeah. a lot of guys leave college after one year. They don't know how to fold their own laundry. You know, how to do pay bills or manage money. Um, I think four years helped me, it groomed me to get into this world, to this lifestyle and, and understand yeah. how to manage my time, my money, and how to be an adult. But as a player, I'm um, just how to be a professional. So what do you think about all the, you know, there's talk about the one and done rule being mm -hmm. taken away, you know, the scandal with mm -hmm. guys getting paid and stuff. What's your take? Like, do you think they should revamp the system or? I think so. Um, I think in some way, shape or form, they should find a way to make it fair for you know college athletes to, to get some type of sponsorship deals or get paid some way somehow. Yeah. Um, I honestly think if you have the opportunity to go work at the age of 18, 19, you should. Um, you know, you're obviously able to do a lot of other things in this world at, at that age. Um, but I think it helps for kids to do at least one year and mature, especially for our league. So you wouldn't want to see the one and done? Oh, I'm not a way? fan of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, but I think if you have, you have every right to do so. But I'm a fan of, you know, guys at least doing one year. I think two years would make, make guys definitely more polished because a lot of teams and GMs and owners are drafting these young kids just based off their potential. And then when they don't pan out or, you know, they blame, you know, us for not working yeah. or this or that. And we have, you know, owner players clashing you know, when the, you know, CBA is up and they say, you know, this is that, well, you know, you drafted these young kids and given that they didn't show out or pan out to what you expected them to be because they weren't, they weren't ready, you know, and it's not our fault they weren't ready. You, know, you guys drafted them, you saw something in them that you, know, you thought was special. And a lot of these kids are special and they have a lot of high potential, but yeah. I think to really see if a player is ready, they need at least a year or two. Yeah, I've always looked at it like what's fair is that they could come right out of high school if they're ready. Because like sure. you said, you can go do anything and else. If, if they're ready. If I, they're, I think it's fair for sure. But yeah. if they're ready, they should definitely give a shot. But there was some years before when before they made the rule change that everybody was jumping out. Yeah. And a lot of them weren't even ready. That's, that's the um, thing. Actually, my year coming out of high school was the last year that you were able to do it. And, yes, um, that was 04? 05, yeah. yeah. So 05, then that was our last class. High school class was able to jump from you know, high school to the league. Now, yeah. Andrew Bynum's. Gerald Green and you know, a couple Dwight, others. Dwight was Dwight. Was no, that the he was year? A he was oh four. Yeah. Oh four. Yeah. Okay. You know, Monte Ellis, Lou Williams. Yeah. Those guys. Yeah. Were in my class. 
Yeah, I, I agree. I think it'd be better, even though it's fair, it'd mm-hmm. be better for the, I think basketball at all levels, mm-hmm. if it, you stayed in like two or three years. For sure, you know? for sure. So, um, so you come out of school, you get drafted by mm-hmm. Cleveland in the second round, um, play with them. Uh, you're in the D League at yep. that time Up and then and back and forth, yeah. And then go to the Spurs, get cut. You go overseas a few times. Where all did you play at overseas? Well, so the process was I did a whole year in Cleveland. Um, I played in the D League a little bit with them. Then I was cut at preseason with Cleveland. And then I got a workout with San Antonio. I did a couple workouts. They signed me for a couple of days and was cut again. I was supposed to go overseas to play in Italy, but never happened. Um, got a letter of clearance to play in the, the D League, which is now the G League. Uh, I played in Reno um, yeah. for a couple of months, then got called back up to San Antonio. And that was right before the lockout happened. So the lockout happened that summer and uh, that year. So um, I signed with the team in Slovenia. Uh, yeah. Union, Union Olympia, it's in Ljubljana, Slovenia. Um, I played there for about four months and it was very different. You know, it was a different lifestyle, it's a different style of play. Obviously there's different rules with you know, three yeah. seconds and you know, on the rim, goaltending, but you know, practicing twice a day, every day. During and the season. All, all year. And, and coaches uh, over there are like... Very crazy. You think some coaches are, no, they're yeah, crazy yeah. there. They're really crazy. <laughs> and um, sometimes, you know, you're not getting paid. Sometimes, you know, you're not getting, you're not getting first class service. It's very different. In some, some cities, you're not in places where people speak English, you know, so it's tough for a lot of guys over there. Luckily, I was in a place that was clean. Everybody spoke English. And, you know, my, my organization was pretty, you know, upscale. So they made sure everybody got paid at a certain point, but yeah. we weren't getting paid. Sometimes, at some points we weren't getting paid. There What's the longest you went without getting paid? Uh, three months. I got paid when I left, actually. So I got paid yeah. the first month, and then when I left, I got wow. paid. Wow. So, uh, so what was your strangest experience overseas? Um, just the food that they ate. I think in my country they had horse. So some people, it was normal for them to eat horse, like horse so meat. So you ate horse? I've tried it. I How tried was it. it? It wasn't bad, you know. Um, it's different. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, they eat different things over there, the way of traveling. Over there, the, like, McDonald's and all the fast food restaurants are, like, top-notch. You know, they make it, like, the commercials is, like, really good. Obviously, yeah. it's bad for you. So it's better than McDonald's it's better. over there. It's yeah, better. it's better over there. It's, McDonald's over there is a lot better than it is here. But, yeah. um, so just the way of travel, we'd have to travel, you know, two and three flights to get certain places and end up in a place like, you know, Russia, where it's freezing snow and the wind is, you know, blowing your face off. But, um, you know, just had a lot of experiences especially when you go out too they they don't have like an age limit when you go out there's 15 16 year olds really? out with you at the club yeah. and everything so it's, you gotta be well, careful you gotta be very careful it's strange and you know certain people around you and, yeah and even you know certain countries they have you know mob mob stuff going on around you have to be careful of uh, certain groups certain crews you have to you know be aware of and uh, your surroundings so yeah it's not the safest thing for everybody so what when when you're getting cut by NBA teams, mm-hmm. is it hard to keep your confidence up? Do you ever lose confidence? For sure. Like, man, I don't know if I'm good enough or what? Even when you're not playing for NBA teams. You can be on an NBA team and not playing. You know, your confidence can easily diminish. Um, but that's the job of your teammates, your coaching staff, and your, your foundation, really, your family and friends to help you know, keep supporting you mm-hmm. emotionally and mentally. You know, stick with it. Your agent, too. My agent, he helped me quite a bit through some process, but my family was big with that, you know. You know, stick with it. Your opportunity is going to come. Just keep working. Okay. You know, a lot of teams are still interested. You're, you're an NBA player. You, know, you, you belong there. You deserve to be there. So just you know, show them you belong there. Did you, in your mind, give yourself a time frame? Like, if I'm not there? Or maybe you were thinking, yeah. I'll play overseas if I have to for Definitely. the it was, duration? Um, or? Well, after, so before the lockout that season. If it didn't work out during that season and um, the lockout happened and I was still you know, playing in the D-League or overseas, you know, I would just have to go a different route and then figure it out. Like, I'll not play ball? Like, do something else? No, I'll play else ball, but I'll just okay. have to probably go a different route. Either said the, the D League or, which is now the G League, and then, or overseas. So I, I figured after the, after the lockout happened, if I wasn't, because I, re- I had to make the team again in San Antonio. It was a two year non guaranteed deal. Okay. So I had to come back and make the team again. If I didn't make the team at that point, I'd probably have to go back overseas and then, you know, go that route and figure out another way. Do you ever look back, like, like did you ever. I'm sure you thought about how you want things to work out. Mm-hmm. Did you ever picture it working out this way? No. You win an NBA championship, no. you set an NBA finals record. No, I, would never, I never thought in a million years it would happen the way it happened, especially how fast it happened for me. Because yeah. um, so, quickly I was out of the league and then you know, quick turnaround after that, the lockout happened, I had to make the team. Halfway through the year, I ended up starting on the team and made it to the Western Conference Finals. And then the year after we went to the finals, we lost. And then the year after that, we won it. But um, from 
being the 15th man on the bench or barely making a team and then starting because Manu had you know, broken his hand, yeah. he had a couple injuries, and there was a lot of opportunity that came. Uh, lucky enough, I got to play a lot of minutes and then to end up starting toward the end of that year. It happened really fast. And, um, you know, it was just a year previous that I was wondering if I was going to ever be in the league and yeah. never thought I'd be a rotational player in the league. So to win a championship within, you know, two or three years of being out of the league, it, it was you know, something I could never predict. 2013, that's the year you guys lose in seven to Miami. Yeah. And you, you hit 27 threes. That was a finals record at that time. Something like that, yeah. <laughs> um, the Ray Allen shot, and you I know that yeah, it probably still hurts you <laughs> losing that finals. But how much did that really, how responsible was that for what you guys did the next year in 2014? Oh, it took 100% of, you know, how we felt, how we carried ourselves the f next year, the chip that we had on our shoulder uh, coming back. Um, so it, was, it definitely left a scar still to this day, you know, because we always think yeah, we could have had two. Yeah, one more, yeah. Yeah, so, um, but he had a big shot. Not only him, but other guys in that, that team, they had a good team. But the way we played in game six, we had them. Um, yeah. We just had a couple mistakes that, you know, shot ourselves in the foot type of deal. And, um, but that shot in game six and seven, the way they kind of took it away from us, it definitely left the scar and you know put a chip on our shoulder for that whole year. That summer was a rough summer, and that whole year was even you know tough. Was it Pop hard was, getting through the '82? It was. Um, you know, Pop was on another level. Everybody's on another level. And just getting back there. Every game we prepared for was for that moment of being yeah. back in the finals and playing against that team. And lucky enough, we got the opportunity. We stayed healthy. Um, everybody was you know clicking at the right time. You know, we had a good group that had been there for three or four years together, and. Um, you know, we started playing pretty good basketball. It was a lot of fun. And y'all were hoping it was Miami. Oh, for you sure. You were pulling for them. For sure. <laughs> yeah, we wanted them again. Um, let's get to some current stuff. Okay. Um, y'all had a bad stretch in February. <laughs> I was like, man, I haven't seen the Spurs. We had a bad stretch all year. <laughs> well, <laughs> we had a bad year. For us, anyways, it's been yeah. a, we had a couple of bad stretches. It wasn't just February. But, yeah, we had a bad stretch in February for sure. Well, lately, you lost 3 of 14, mm -hmm. and now you've won 8 of 10. What's, what's been the difference? Oh, well, we, you know, definitely being at home helped. February, we're on the road more than anything. Yeah. Um, that's the rodeo road trip for us. But our fans are great. You know, we have one of the most underrated cities, sports cities in the country, which I think is one of the top, especially fan base wise. Mm -hmm. Our fans are, you know, they're crazy about us. And the Final Four is there right now. Um, I'm sure people are seeing and understanding yeah. how, how much they love sports there. But, um, you know, being at home, us being able to refocus, um, we got some guys healthier. You know, we got Rudy back. You know, all year we've had so many guys out. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think the only, only person that's been healthy for us is Patty. Patty's been he healthy for most of the game, year. Yeah. Uh, Rudy's been out half the season almost. You know, LA had some tweaks here and there. Powell had some injuries. I had an injury with the groin. Obviously, Kawhi's been out the whole the whole year, damn near. You know, Manu and Tony had some up and down. Tony missed the first half of the season. So this year was you know very different for us injury wise. I don't think they've ever had a season like this. But you, I mean, you're right. You you mentioned all the injuries, but a lot of times, man, it seems like you guys, you might, you're missing a star. I mean, you've mm -hmm. been missing Kawhi, mm -hmm. and you're still, right now, the fourth seed in the West. How do you guys do it when you're out? When You know, you yeah. send lineups out there, people don't even know three of the starters. Yeah, well, that's... And when? Solely based on our coaching staff and what they can put together and what they do. Um, the lineups, the, you know, the coverages that they throw at different people, and just developing those guys and trusting those younger guys. Our younger guys have grown a lot this year. They got an opportunity to do a lot, play a lot more than they normally would have. And we've groomed them to be ready, prepared for you know this time of year and for mm -hmm. the playoffs. Um, I think it's coming around. I think they're learning. Dejounte's learning a lot more. He's getting better. He's adapting, adjusting very well. You know, obviously he's taking some games, but you know he's kind of where we want him to be. And hopefully he continues to grow. Um, but LA stepped up quite. A, everybody else has stepped yeah. up. We've come together as a team. And everybody keeps talking about the meeting, the meeting. We had multiple meetings, and those meetings have helped us come together. And our coaching staff, they've you know, come together. We're kind of on the same page and staying positive. And things started to turn around for us. Once you get you know, one or two wins, then confidence, momentum, and you know, we start playing better together. And I think for us, mostly said defensively, you know, we started out great first half of the season defensively. And then in kind of February, we kind of yeah. lacked off. We started picking that back up, and that's what's you know, been helping us be more successful. What? You mentioned the coaching staff. What makes Greg Popovich such a good coach? Uh, he gets everybody to, to fall in line. Um, he, gets everybody to, he, holds, he holds everybody accountable. You know, everybody has his undivided attention. 
and they listen. They buy into everything that he's saying and what he wants from you. And because he knows what he's doing. Obviously, he's okay. been successful at it, and he's continuing to be successful at it. Um, so, I said, it starts from the top on down. And if he sees, if everybody can see him cuss out Timmy, Tony, and Manu, you know. So that you know, really said it. Pretty like much the sets fact the tone. That you're when, you, when you first get into this organization, you see it first, <laughs> first day. You know, he's going to cuss one of the vets out. And you're like, oh, you know, <laughs> I'm not safe here. <laughs> so he can easily cuss anybody out, but he hold, holds them accountable and, and just as much as, as the younger guys. Um, obviously, it gives the young guys a little more time because they don't understand the system. He holds the older guys more accountable because they've been there so long and they should know better. But you get everybody to fall in line, that's the first step in, of, in letting guys know the game is not, you know, the game is bigger than you. You know, it's not a place for egos. And so they recruit the right people, so. I was going to say, because, like, a lot of players don't like being yelled at in the uh, NBA. Most don't. <laughs> yeah, so why yeah. do you think, it, it, you may have said it, the fact that your superstars are very humble take it. and they, they know that the game said it's, it's not about them. They know the game is bigger than them. It's about the team. And they're willing to get cussed out to, for the better of the team or to understand or take the criticism. Okay. All of them are, you know, humbled guys. Nobody likes to get yelled at. But, you know, we understand where it's coming from. We understand the criticism and what we need to do. Um, and to get cussed out less or yelled out less, <laughs> you know, we have to do better. And not just for ourselves, but for our teammates and for our team. So, you know, so it kind of starts so with the characters that they, they bring in and, you know, how they build the team around those characters. I was going to say, because have, have, you, you, have you seen guys come there, you don't have to name names, yeah. but, and not be able to... Like they not Spurs type guys. For sure, um, they don't last very long. Um, but eventually, most of those guys, I said, if they buy in, they, they'll adapt and adjust to it. Some of them, a very few, and, you know, don't adapt and adjust, and then you mm -hmm. can tell their personality. They're not Spurs like guys, but so they won't. They don't stick around too long. They're usually there for a year or two, and then go somewhere else. So, um, but somehow they always find hidden treasure in, in different countries. They find a, a good, you know, big man or a shooting guard. Yeah. Or, who was really good and knows the value of you know being over here and playing in this league and understands you know they don't need to have an ego they don't need to score or it's about their points or their individual accolades mm -hmm. you know, they just want to win games and also play here so they're just grateful to be here and I've always I don't know how much you follow football but I've I've always I used to follow you, quite a bit okay when did I was you younger, ever play, I used to play yeah, you play um, how how long did you play. I played up until my sophomore year of high school. I was a okay. quarterback. quarterback. When I transferred school, when I transferred schools, they didn't have a football team anymore, so I, I couldn't. I had to stop playing to give it up. Were you as good in football as basketball? At the time, people thought so. People thought I was probably so you better were thinking, in football. Really? Yeah, but I, I, with my school, we didn't throw. So I was a quarterback. So you were running quarterback. Yeah, I got a couple of recruits, um, you know, uh, from different schools. A couple of schools recruiting me, but not major because I was really yeah. young at the time. But I could throw, but we just never threw the ball. <laughs> and then, and, you know, outdoor sports in New York, yeah, it's cold, yeah, it's snow, and in the summertime, it's really hot. So, um, <laughs> you know, indoor sports, I was like, you know, I'm going to stick to this. And my dad kind of pushed me toward that way as well. Yeah, um, so I was going to say football. Mm -hmm. I've always thought of the Spurs as like the Patriots. People and Popovich like Bill Belichick. And now there's all this stuff about players saying it's not fun to play for Belichick and all that. <laughs> Is it fun to play for pop? <laughs> At times. <laughs> but, you know, the, the fun part of it is winning. Okay. You know, um, when you do your job, obviously he's going to be on top of you. He's going to be on you. Um, he holds you a certain way. He holds the organization a certain way to be professional. And when, I, when you have that type of professionalism around the whole, you know, organization, there's going to be less air or less room for error and mm -hmm. less jokes and clowning around. Obviously, guys like to, you know, have fun. But we still have some fun here and there, but it's a lot less of that in our in our organization so um when you're losing it's tough you know when it's really tight and then you're losing but yeah. the fun part is winning we've always won 50 you know plus season 50 wins plus and been top c in the playoffs and gone pretty you know decent in the playoffs and that's the fun part of it so you have to sacrifice some of those you know jokes and games and clowning around and and having you know fun going out you know to be successful yeah. if you want to be successful. To Do be you feel there are any misconceptions about the Spurs? No. Um, I think what people kind of think is kind of what we are. You know, I don't think there's any hidden... Obviously, we're very private about everything we do. Mm -hmm. um, there's some things behind the scenes I'm sure that you don't know about, but what you said, 
what you see is kind of what you get from with, with us. You know, obviously they're known as a very professional, yeah. from top to bottom type organization. They do things by the book, and you know, and Pop even off the court is is great guy about you know he speaks up for us in politics, speaks up for us and you know different encourages us to express ourselves because everybody comes from different countries, they're different cultures. So um, you know he's he's big on that, and he updates us what's going on in the world because we're all stuck in our little bubble yeah. of you know just the NBA and playing games and think it's life or death because we're losing games and you know still at the end of the day it's a basketball game and he he lets us know that yeah. and updates us with what's going on in the news and sometimes quizzes us. So really, yeah, because I, I was when I'm around Popovich, it does seem like he's more interested. Like, if you ask him a basketball question or something, he might not want to even talk about it. Yeah. But ask him about wine or politics yeah. or race or whatever, <laughs> Trump, and he, he's going to go For off. For sure. Is he like that with you guys? He's very passionate about it. Obviously, with us, we see him more, more so on the court. So we'll talk basketball when we're yeah. there. But when we leave the court, you know, he's talking about restaurants. You know, <laughs> we're wine. There's a good food spot here. There's a good... Then, you know, what happened in the news? Anybody know who this person is or who got fired today? You know, he's, he's big on that, and that's most of us. When we get off the court, we kind of want to leave basketball alone yeah, okay. so that we don't burn ourselves out. You know, when I leave, I'd rather watch TV shows instead of the game. You know, watch a good TV series. So what's your favorite movie. TV show? can't say I have a favorite. Um, you know, right now I'm watching a lot of different things. I'm catching up on all the old ones. You know, I used to watch the top five for me, like Game of Thrones. Okay. Uh, Homeland is a good one. You know, Breaking Bad, those, those are the top ones that I, that I have watched. But uh, I'm trying to go back now and catch the ones that I missed, like The, the Wire. Wire. Oh, I was going to ask you. Yeah, I'm, so I'm kind of in the middle of that right now. And uh, Sopranos is another one that I'm, I have to catch up on. So you do that on the road? Yeah. I mean, our planes, I said, it's very, I said the air is, we don't have a lot of stuff going on in our planes. So guys are either reading books or watching their TV shows. It's so you not, mean like playing card, y'all ain't... Very, you don't see it on our plane. You don't see it Is gambling. that a rule or Not or a just rule, guys it's, just, don't... it's just how our atmosphere is. It's how it's always been. And it's kind of carried over since, even when, since Timmy's left. But since Timmy's been here, it's always everybody watches their shows, they do their own thing and okay. read books and, or sleep. So we have a lot of downtime to watch TV shows. And that's when I started, when I got here a couple of years ago, just you know, watching, downloading some TV series because on the plane there's nothing up. You might talk to the guy next to you, but other than that, no everybody's... No Blu-ray or nothing. <laughs> nah, no, none of that's going on in our plane. I just... um, I, Kawhi Leonard obviously been in the news and the headlines. Mm -hmm. What's going... Everybody's asking, what's going on? When's he coming back? What, what's, what's your understanding of everything? The only person that really knows is Kawhi Leonard. Um, but from my understanding is he had an injury last season that has been, you know, messing with him. It, it supposedly it was kind of with him last season, he played through it some of last season and trickled down to get worse during the summertime. Yeah. Um, came back, you know, said you know, he had some issues with it, so they were working on it, rehabbing it. And um, I guess he had a setback, he had a couple of setbacks and then tried to re, I guess, evaluate, had another group reevaluate it. But um, said nobody really knows except for Kawhi. He's been out, he came back for some games. He seemed like he was okay, but I guess, you know, he reevaluated it and it didn't look right. Things didn't go the way he wanted it to go. He was still in pain. So, um, so right now, but in our mind, we've been all year, he, especially since All-Star break, we've mentally, our mindset is he's not coming back. Okay. Mentally, we would just, this is the group that we have and he's probably, there's only five games left now. So we still have that mentality. It'd be great to have him. Yeah. But we don't really know. You know, we had communication. We sat down. With, some of us talked to him individually. We text him. You know, he's still very much so a part of our team. So you're in touch with him. Right? We're all in touch okay. with him. We all text him. We're all in touch with him. Um, he's still very much a part of our group and our team. We still have his back. Whatever his decision is, what he's doing. And that was, you know, part of the meeting. We just let him know that. Um, we're trying to get updates because we get updates through the media sometimes and we don't really know. So just trying to find out what's going on. And I don't think he even really knows because he's waiting to hear back from his group, his doctors, when they're clear, clearing him and letting him know that he's able to go yeah. and what percentage he's at and what it'll sustain. Because he said he was at a good percentage when he came back, but once he started playing, I guess it you know, deteriorated and diminished and um, you know, started getting more pain. So they're trying to find out what's a good place for him to be at where he can sustain you know, strength, I guess, okay. in that, that muscle. So when you, th th there were reports that came out about the meeting being tense, you mm -hmm. know, and you were like, you know, you tweeted, yeah. no, that's far, it couldn't be first from truth. What was the meeting like? I mean, what you can say about it? Like, kind of like how we were just talking, just like adults, how me and you were talking. Um, so you, I've described our, our team, our personalities on our team. 
our organization, our facility, we don't have character like those guys in our team that are going to be beefing in the locker room or yeah. have intense conversations. You know, uh, we all understand injuries, especially the older guys. Uh, they understand, you know, careers. They understand, you know, what you're going through and mindset. Everybody's an individual, you know, business. You're a CEO of your own business, your own body. And we respect that. We all respect each other. So, you know, we just sat down and talked. And, and it wasn't just about him, but mm -hmm. so at that point, too, we were losing games. <laughs> so, was, you know, we need to regroup and then just, you know, also just communicating and finding out, you know, what you're trying to find out. Yeah. yeah. And said so there's no real answer. We don't know. I don't think he really knows. And So nobody was going at him like, yo, man, you softer. No, <laughs> no not at all. <laughs> we don't have a person. You, could you picture so. Mono and Tony? Yeah. They said Mono. Could you picture Mono and Tony? <laughs> what, do you, what do you, you know, that, that doesn't even look like them. Yeah. I don't yeah. know what that would look like. But um, beyond, it's the total opposite of tense. You know, everybody was just communicating, talking, and you know, seeing what we the next step was for us as a group, and you know, not just him, but you know, just getting an update from him, but seeing the next step was for us. So, last thing about this, there is this narrative. I don't know how much you follow it. Mm -hmm. There's this narrative building out there that Kawhi and the Spurs, or mm -hmm. not just the front office, but the team, mm -hmm. the players, are at odds and all that. I can say from, from our team and from their perspective and standpoint, I can speak for most of them. There is no odds, okay. you know, we're not at odds with him. Um, I don't know about the front office. I don't know about you know, family issues yeah. or whatever that is. I would like to guess none because he's in the facility, he's at the arena, he's still there and they communicate this, they'll talk and check up on him. He still works out with our training staff. But from the team's perspective, you know, there's nobody on our team that's at odds with him. Okay. Um, you know, we understand that so we have his back regardless of what he's going through. And, you know, the younger guys, most of them are you know, happy to see him be around, but also lucky to have the opportunity to play because he's out, but he's also there teaching them. Okay. Um, and, you know, obviously we would love to have him. Like I said, we, we could use him and probably could need him if we want to make this last run. But, you know, we feel we have a pretty good group right now and we're, we're playing decent basketball. And hopefully everybody's getting 100% healthy, but most of us are getting healthier. And, you know, that's the most important part of this time of the season. You, I was reading, I think you had an article about you in Sports Illustrated recently. Mm -hmm. uh, you were interviewed. And you were saying you love, you, you and the Spurs in general love Skip Bayless. Yeah, Skip's an honorary. <laughs> like you one of the few teams. He's honor, yeah, he's an honorary Spur. Yeah, he's one of the very few that he likes. Yeah, so. um, he says that y'all would have beat the Spurs if, I mean, I'm sorry, you would have beat the Warriors last year in the playoffs with Kawhi. What's your thoughts on that? I mean, you know, woulda, coulda, shoulda. Um, if this, if that, you know, you could always say ifs or, you know, wouldas, couldas. We won't know. Um, I think we had a really good chance. I think we would have won game one and mm -hmm. it would have been a better, more interesting series. They obviously are a great team. They have a great coach. Um, I'm sure they would have adjusted and adapted and, and refocused. And, you know, who knows how it would have went. But I think for sure we had a better shot at beating them with him, you know, not being injured. But, you know, things happen. And usually it's at the healthiest team. They, they were the healthiest team for the last, yeah. you know, three or four years with, you know, the best team also. But them being the healthiest for the last three or four years is the reason why they've been in the finals. You know, What's the key you feel like to beating them? Um, I think teams are kind of figuring out a little bit of, of how their style of play is. You know, you have to... Obviously, small ball is the thing nowadays. You have to go one through four, small where you can switch down the line. Um, but you got to. So kinda, you guys don't look at it as going big with Powell and. We can Marcus. switch up sometimes. Okay. Um, it depends on, you know, what the lineups are. If we go small, we'll try to match. If we go big, we'll try to slow the game down. Uh, you know, obviously that's the coaching staff. Yeah. That's what they're paid to do. That's you know, above my pay grade. But if I were to guess, you know, slow the game down against them, not turn the ball over, obviously and you know get to their shooters hopefully they have an off night and miss some but you want to make their other guys make plays so try to limit those three guys four guys obviously have all stars but yeah. the main three shooters from getting as many touches as possible slow the game down not turn the ball over if you slow the game down um it does it allows them allows your defense to be able to guard them better because once they're out and running they have too many shooters to find mm -hmm. and, and and transition that somebody's going to be open now, you guys just beat Houston by 17, mm -hmm. beat them last year in the playoffs uh, in six games. What do you think, like, what's going to be the key if you guys meet them in the playoffs 
Same. To play. Same. Same. Are they you very got, similar to the yeah, uh, they, they, Warriors? Yeah, they like to get up and down. They like to run. They like to shoot a lot of threes. Um, I think Golden State might be a little bit better defensively okay. than Houston, but Houston has so many threats and scores they can outscore you. So you have to slow the game down on them. You can't let them get out in transition. Try to let them get, you know, lower possessions. Um, you know, limit their their stars from getting as many good looks. But just run them. Try not to let them get as many threes. Run them off the line, and hopefully they have say, off night. It looked like last year in the playoffs, y'all ran them off the line, and you know they don't want to pull up for a <laughs> mid-range jump, right? Yeah, so you so know if you get them off the that's line, that's kind of what you're kind of <laughs> giving up. You don't want the rim. You don't want the, the free throw line or three ball. You know, yeah. that's what. James Harden specializes in, you know, three balls or getting at the rim or getting to the free throw line. You want to kind of keep him, it's hard to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> keep him from doing all three of those things is really hard to do. But, you know, Pop's going to ask us to do that. <laughs> you know, coach is going to want you to be perfect. So, you know, we want to give up. And that's most teams. Most of the mid-range game is, is kind of a lost art now with yeah. most teams. Not many teams shoot it well. So you kind of want to give that up. Most teams shoot threes or try to get to the rim. Is it easier to guard? I mean, the three obviously isn't easy to guard. But when you kind of know they don't want to pull up at 15 feet, you know they're going to attack the rim. Does that make it easier? A little bit. Um, it's easier to guard when you know that you're able to give up something. And you know what it is that you want to give okay. up. Because if a coach says, you know, I want you to stop this, I want you to stop everything, then it's hard to guard that. I don't want them to get threes. I don't want to get mid-range or layups. You got to pick one of those. I got to yeah. give up something. Because it's hard to stop you know, an all-star player, a great player, from yeah. doing all three. So it's easier to adjust defensively as a player to be like, all right, it's okay if I give up this up. You know, I'll make him make the extra pass. If I give up this corner three to this guy, then that's okay. If I give up the mid-range to these guys, then we'll live with that. If he makes a shot, you know, we'll give him a pat on the back and, you know, two claps. Mm -hmm. so. I'm an MVP voter. Who should I vote for? This year, year, I think, hands down, it's, it's pretty easy to tell. You know, number one team in the league. Yeah, um, hard. Once again, even with guys out, you know, with CP being out, um, I was leading scorer in the league. I mean, he's done a lot. So, but being number one team in the league this year, he's been, you know, top three MVP for the last couple of years. And um, so him having overall, I don't know if overall right now, but they're definitely number one yeah, in the they West. Got the best. Yeah, they got the best. So right. it's, it's hands down an easy choice for most people, I think. Who do you think is the best player in the league? <laughs> the best player in the world to me. Um, you know, there's a lot of, you know, people, there's a lot of chat, there's a lot of options. But I think LeBron James, um, okay. is per most people would choose. You know, start your organization or start your franchise, but would be a player like that. Um, you know, he just impacts the game just differently than a lot of people, not just scoring, passing, rebounding. He does so many things. And I'm not saying other guys don't want to create that attention and don't yeah. do that, but it, it's hard to be that, that big of a person or player and be able to move the way he does and do the things he does. Um, on so many aspects or levels of the game. Yeah. You know, most guys are really good at scoring. Most guys are really good at shooting. You know, he's, he's upped his game not only from you know, those other things, but he also in increased his shooting percentage. He's also gotten better with you know, shooting free throws. He's done all the little mm -hmm. things each year. In 15 seasons, you would think he would <laughs> kind of diminish climb, a little right? bit. But no, he, he's kind of even getting better. But even without those things, I said, he's just the way he impacts the game, the attention he draws, and how he gets his you know, team to play. Certain players have revamped their careers playing with the guy. So um, I was going to ask you, your rookie year, you played with him. That was his last year in Cleveland. Before he left to Miami. Yeah. yeah. What are your memories of that season? What was it like playing with him? Well, I was, I was young. I was a rookie. You know, I was a sponge. Um, I remember him being a big kid, a lot of fun, very humble guy down to earth. But you know, he was good. He could take over the game at any point whenever he wanted to. Um, but I learned a lot from him. You know, Shaq was there at the time. Mo Williams, Anthony Parker, yeah. Delonte West, you yeah, know, yeah. Jamar Moon. I learned a lot from those guys. They were a lot. They were a fun group to be around. They loved to, you know, have fun, you know, hang out. We did a lot as a team. But um, you know, on the court, they took care of business. But I said on the court, I learned a lot. You know, just watching them play and playing against them. But you could see there's a big difference from then and now of how much he's matured as a player and a leader, and you know, being a professional. Uh, coming from Miami. I was going to say, d there's a lot of talk about him being better now. Do you think he's better now than back in 2010? I think he's more mature and smarter. Um, he was always a high IQ player in my eyes. But I think going to Miami and, and learning, let's say, how to win. Back then, he, he could win games, but yeah. he, he didn't know how to really, I don't know how to, he didn't know how to win, win. You like know, so championship. Exactly, win. championship win. Because so. I thought y'all were good enough 
to win that For championship sure. that year. They had the team, they had the tools. Um, but I don't think we had the experience and the maturity. The only person that had the experience was Shaq, and he was toward the He's end of his older. career. He was older. So um, I think him going to Miami definitely helped him mature and learn how to win, you know, and you know, being with Pat Riley and being mm -hmm. along with Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh. Obviously, it helps with those great players, but even with, you know, you have the greatest roster of all time. If you don't have the experience or, you know, somebody at, at the top teaching you or helping you learn how to, to be there, you're not going to get there. That's a good point because I've, I've never obviously didn't play in the NBA and mm -hmm. so never played in series. You know, mm -hmm. it's always been one and done high school and college and stuff. Um, how grueling, it must be like it's tough. Uh, more grueling so, seven games. More so mentally than anything. Yeah. You know, I think the team that's the mentally tough is the one that lasts the longest because um, the season itself is already tough. And they say, you know, they extended it. It's supposed to be easier. It doesn't seem like it. Yeah. You know, your body, your mind, emotionally, you're beat up. You know, you're kind of done with it. You want to be you know, on vacation, you want to be home, you want to be with your family. So guys that I can actually mentally lock in and, and stay with it, or the team that actually mentally locks in and sticks with it as a team usually that goes the furthest. So, um, yeah. And there's no seven, surprises. No. And you they, get to a point where you must know everything they're going to do and they must know everything exactly. you're going to do. So you're studying everything they're doing and it also comes down to a lot of coaching. You know, um, game to game it changes. You know. Depending on who you're playing, obviously sometimes you may have a team that you're just, you know, way better than them. Yeah. And you'll okay, it's not gonna be easy regardless, but you know that you, you can beat them, you know, more games than you know they will out yeah. of five or six games. But there's some teams that are, you know, evenly matched. Most teams have, you know, enough talent to evenly match. And game to game you'll have a good win. You might win by twenty, and next game you might lose by twenty. It's yeah. like because they just have a coaching change or and then you have to go back to film, you go back to the drawing board, see what is mistakes you need to fix and what things you need to change of how they're adapting just and how you're guarding them or how you're playing them. And they obviously figured it out, oh, this is how they're playing us. So this is what's open. They found the open spot. Now we have to change it up to see, you know, if they can adjust and adapt to that. And it might change the whole series. Now, I've said LeBron, we know, could be a free agent this summer. Mm -hmm. I've said on TV, I think if he went to the Spurs, that'd be the best place for him to win championships going forward. Probably. How do you see him fitting it? Would he fit into the whole Spurs culture and everything? I mean, obviously they'll make it work. They'll find a way, <laughs> I'm sure. Um, I think he'll fit in perfectly, but it depends on who they're able to keep around, you know, obviously with the cap and who they'd have to trade and get rid of. Um, well, so he's the type of guy that changes the franchise. The impact that he has on the franchise is, is unbelievable. Um, but I said for him, not just us, but any team where they have you know good coaching or a good organization, or you know good surrounding or a good foundation, I think we'll be able to take him in and, and you know win a lot of games and also be a contender. But he himself can make any team a contender. I said being the Spurs organization, obviously with Pop, and you know depending on who they're able to keep, if they can still keep Kawhi and LA yeah. and those foundational pieces. Um, it would be interesting to see. I'm sure. Could you see him, like, could he get yelled at by Pop and take that? And, I don't you know. know. I mean? I said, uh, <laughs> last time I played with Bronny was, you know, was nine, eight, seven, eight years ago, yeah. you know, my rookie year. I'm sure he can. Being over in Miami with Pat Riley, I'm sure he's able to. Um, I'm sure he can adapt and adjust, but I'm sure also the coach staff will adapt and adjust to him. Yeah. So He wasn't getting yelled at back then in 2010? Not so much. You know, Mike <laughs> Brown, he... He, he yells, but not too much. Uh, not as many of the players either. He didn't really yell at anybody. Okay. You know, Mike Brown okay. was an encourager. He was a guy that kind of, you know, positive energy, positive vibes. But, you know, he didn't really do a lot of cussing people out and yelling at people. So, Do you have a take on who's the greatest of all time, the GOAT? Michael Jordan. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm a little biased as well. But growing up watching him, you know, I was a kid. Obviously, watching the game now, it's a little different. You know, the game back then yeah. is different. But growing up watching him and how he used to take over games and him being a Carolina alum, you know, obviously. Did you did you get me. to meet him, know yeah. him at, because you went to UNC or? I met him there at Carolina, you know, once or twice. And then outside of that as well. But, yeah, we got, we got to meet him. He came back for a couple of events. Would he ever play with you guys? No, nah, at that point, okay. he still, he was, he was kind of old at that yeah. point. <laughs> yeah, so, no, nah, he didn't play at that point. Do you have a top five players of all time? Oh man, yeah. I guess I could list off a couple of a couple of names for you. Obviously, Mike. Yeah. Um, I think Kareem would have to be in there. Bill Russell. Uh, 
I guess I could put Bron in there in the top five. I think when it's all said and done, he'll probably mm -hmm. be in the top five. And then um, you know, it's a toss-up for that, that fifth one. I mean, I never was a Kobe fan, but playing against him, you, you had to respect him and see what he did, what he had done yeah. and how many rings. But, um, you know, Kobe or Magic, one of those two guys, it's tough. Who who do you who was the toughest guy? Or? I have to, have to throw a big in there. Shaq has definitely got to be in my top. Okay. He, was, he was so dominant, you know the way he just moved people. <laughs> it was yeah. hard. You had to change your whole offense and defense just to for him. You know teams <laughs> had to change everything for one guy. Like I'm not saying people don't do that now, but yeah, two and three guys to guard Shaq. He was just a, a force that I I've never seen before. I don't think many people have seen before. Who who was the toughest guy for you to guard? Or is, it's, maybe. There's a lot so of guys. There's just different guard. ways of, of guarding them that are tough. Obviously, Kevin Durant, he's 6'11 and moves like a point guard. You know, mm -hmm. he can shoot. You can't block a shot. So um, there's many different guys that are very hard to guard. But he's one of them. Um, you know, and then even guys that run off a bunch of screens, like a J.J. Redick, Kyle Korver, Ray Allen. you got to chase them off four and five screens, and those screens are seven-footers, you know, 270 pounds, <laughs> and they're hitting you. And yeah. it's hard to get to them, hard to chase them, hard to, you know, fight through those screens. But... Everybody's you know tough to guard in different ways, but I think for me it was always the guys that are bigger than me that could shoot the ball and handle the ball. Okay. So. Now you didn't mention Tim Duncan. I did. Yeah, uh, top I did. five. I, it, I, it, <laughs> well, not, is he underrated? You feel by for people sure. in general? For sure. Um, it's hard to put top five. You know, yes. I think it'd be top five. You know, guards, top five bigs. Yeah. Obviously, Timmy is you know top five all time for me. So it's power forward. He's number one for yeah. me. But um, I think he was underrated because you know. When people look at players, they look at, you know, scoring, you know, you know, rebounds and what you do, you know, offensively and, you know, winning. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of that winning, you know, from Timmy wasn't just what he did offensively. Um, he was probably the best passing big I've ever seen. And defensively, he's underrated. Even when he was older and couldn't jump, had one leg. You know, he would, yeah. you know, <laughs> def and we realized that when he left, because that paint presence is not there, even though he's not, you know, jumping above the square and blocking yeah. shots, he still altered a lot of shots, blocked a lot of shots, and was crafty with getting rebounds and just certain reads, you know, his IQ defensively. And said, I, I would easily get, you know, four to six points a game just off him finding me, you know, cutting through the lane, you know, passing because of yeah. how good he was. He'll, he'll take a risk and throw that pass, but he was very good at it, and he was just underrated as a, as a teammate. You know, obviously he was great offensively to yeah. score. Obviously, you know, he's bang shot and, you know, do all the little things. But as a screener, he would screen guys and get so many people. He got me open so much and find me and pass. And for a guy that's the greatest power forward all time to try to get me open, you know, says a lot about him. <laughs> what was something that would surprise people about Tim Duncan? About Timmy? Because um, I don't think people really have a, you know, they just think people he think he's quiet. Quiet. He's yeah. not quiet. He's not quiet. No, <laughs> uh, he, he talks, man, and he has jokes. He's a very sarcastic guy and pretty funny. You know, he is into many different things. I've I seen heard he used to have a paintball. He does paintball guns. He does yeah. that. He does his, you know, karate or whatever he's oh, into. Oh, he did martial arts. He does all that stuff. He's into boxing. He's into really? a lot of different things. He's into, you know, cars. Obviously, in Texas, we have guns, so you know, that's where yeah. paintball comes from. But you did know, all ever do that as a team? We did. Paintball? At the end of the year, one year we did paintball, and he lit me up pretty, pretty good. I didn't want <laughs> to go hurts, back again. It does, really, especially at close range. Yeah. Paintballs, they hurt. <laughs> yeah. So, what are you in? What are some of your hobbies outside of basketball? And I'm a pretty simple guy. I mean, I like to travel, uh, summertime especially. Even though you know we travel a lot during the year, yeah. I, I'm trying to see as many places as I can. Really, um, like islands or just everywhere, wherever? other countries, islands. Okay. Um, I try to get out of the country at least once or twice a summer um, and see different cultures, you know, experience different views, foods, yeah. you know, all, all that stuff. But I'm pretty simple. So I like, you know, food, sleep, you know, and you and say simple, but hanging. you got this huge snake, don't you? Yeah, well, I like animals. <laughs> you know, it's, not, it's not just snakes. I like all animals. I grew up in a household. My grandma, she had all types of animals come through her household. So the reason why I got the snake is because I didn't have time for any other animals when I was wanting a pet. I wanted a pet. Okay. So I was in college when I got her, and I didn't have time for a dog. You we weren't have, allowed to have dogs in dorm rooms or you know, wherever you're living. Or, now I have two dogs as well, but you know, <laughs> I got her then. My uncle had one, so. Wow. What kind of snake is it? Uh, it's a Colombian boa. She's a, I guess she's so a it must red be tail. Huge. She's big now, but she was small. I got her from Petco. Um, okay. She was really small. Now she's about eight feet. 
Um, so you'll have her around your neck and... Sometimes you take her out, but usually they tell you not to put them around your neck as much because, you know, cause, yeah. but you know, I hang out with her here and there, not as much as I used to when she was younger because I have the dogs now, but they're just low maintenance. They're very easy. All they need is water and heat and you feed them once a month. Uh, you know, when they're younger, probably once a week, but now she eats once every two months, once every month and a half. What's Pop and your teammates think about the snake? Um, some of them, it's 50-50 with most people. Some of them are very interested to see. Some of them are like, get that thing away from me. You know, uh, Manos actually brought his kids over to watch a feeding one time because they're so interested in, in animals and, yeah. and snakes now, too. They do a lot of, you know, geographical stuff in the summertime when they travel and also watch a lot of TV of Animal Planet. So okay. they wanted to see one live. And actually, before I got rid of the other one, I had to. I had a smaller one. His youngest son was wanted to see it. So he brought all the kids over and they watched a feeding, which was wow. interesting for them. Well, Danny, man, I appreciate your appreciate time. You, man. It's been great, man. Yeah. Good luck Pleasure the rest of the way. Thank you. We need it. <laughs> I, hey, I've learned. I, I've all. I was. I've always said I was counting y'all out. I think even before you were with the Spurs. <laughs> for, for sure. You know? for I sure. was saying they're old and Duncan's old. And, they were and, old when I got here, and yeah, he still lasts like. He would play with them for like six, seven years. I don't, yeah. Hey, Tim's retired two years ago. I don't know when he's retiring. Huh? <laughs> this is year five in. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so good luck, man. Thank and you. Uh, I hope y'all get Kawhi back too, because it would really. It would be nice. Really it would be nice. But so we're planning to move without him. I think yeah, either, either way, I think we're still a dangerous team that could be a wild card. Yeah, yeah. All right, man. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. All right, here we go with another segment. One of my favorite parts of the podcast. Admit it, my your man, favorite. It's your favorite. J-Mac. I, I wouldn't go that Danny far. Danny Green's a good dude, but It's in it. the top three. Oh. How about that? All right. <laughs> <laughs> my man, Jason McIntyre, is here. Good to have you, as always, on Knockdown J. What you got for me? Well, I'm wearing my Tiger Woods red this week. He's going to the Masters. Yes, but, uh, I hope he does better than you will do in this segment. So let's, speaking of red, let's go to the Houston Rockets. And your guy, James Harden, you've been gassing him up all year. Great player. Um, you know, LeBron's slowly getting into the MVP debate again. I don't believe James Harden should be the unanimous MVP. We've only seen one in NBA history. Steph Curry a few years ago, who was ridiculously good off the charts. Listen, Harden's been great, but Chris, when you look at his numbers this year, they're not that much better than last year. And last year, I had him as the MVP over Westbrook. You and you, your love for Westbrook, I get. Um, I think LeBron's going to take a lot of votes, and I don't think Harden's going to be anywhere near unanimous. Yeah, I think that's the only question. Is We know Harden's going to win the MVP. The question well, is, will oh, he yeah, 100% be? 100% sure. Oh, yeah, there's no question. It's over. It's over. Okay. The question is, will he be unanimous? You don't think recency bias plays no, into the voters' bias, mind? What? Has I mean, Harden started struggling? No, but LeBron's been better since the All-Star break than James Harden, and he's had a brand new team basically around him. I don't know that no he's been No head coach, no Kevin Love. What, what, why has he been better since the All-Star break? I mean, do you, do you want to go through the triple-doubles where he did okay. an entire so with, month where he averaged a triple-double without Kevin Love? His head coach is now gone, and he's still top four in the East? What he's done has been remarkable. Still top four in the East? LeBron. Yeah. Cleveland should never be anywhere near falling well, out of the top Well, when you lose Kyrie Irving, you replace it with a damaged goods and Isaiah Thomas. Uh, you got yeah. Rodney Hood, uh, Ooh. Ooh. Rodney. Jordan Clarkson, George Hill, <laughs> oh. and Larry Nance Jr. How many All-Star games and combined for those dudes? They're not as good as Kyrie right. Irving individually, but combined, that's a pretty good pickup. I can't believe you're disrespecting LeBron, who's never played 82 games in a season. He's doing it basically to prove you and Jason Whitlock and others who knocked him last year. I LeBron's, didn't knock him last year. All right, fine. Maybe just Whitlock. And he's I, leading I, the I'm league in minutes at 33 in his 15th year. Don't say it's a lock that Harden wins the MVP. I will it admit, is a lock. He's got the inside it track. It is an absolute lock. Fine. Is he going to be unanimous? That's the only question. Should he be? Yes, because I don't see how you make an argument for anybody else. This guy is the driving force behind the highest-rated offense in the history of the NBA. Wait, is it James Harden this or Mike D'Antoni? It's James Harden. Oh, this guy, because okay. how many jumpers did Mike D'Antoni hit this year? Well, I don't know. He installed the entire offense. Oh, James Harden wasn't good before Mike well, D'Antoni got there? Well, Mike D'Antoni kind of did the same James thing Harden in Phoenix won, with Steve Nash. James Harden should have won the MVP in 2015. The players voted James Harden the MVP in 2015. Who was the coach? Wait, who, won, Mike the, who won the MVP that year? It wasn't Mike D'Antoni. Oh, who won Steph, the MVP? Steph. Okay, right. But what Harden, Harden is great. My point no, is that don't him. tell me Harden just got great no, he's when been Mike D'Antoni was there. Yeah, yeah. He still good. was scoring a ton of points, getting a lot of assists. He, he got an uptick when D'Antoni got no there. No doubt about because it. Because the system does that. But here's the thing. James Harden has a better PER, more points per game. 
than LeBron James. He he is is right there with LeBron in assists. They're both about the same. Uh, but he, uh, James Horn's actually down last year, 11 assists per game. This year, only eight. Yeah, because he's sharing and the LeBron's point guard. And LeBron's averaging career high rebounds, is, is, career high assists. Is LeBron sharing point guard duties with Chris Paul? He's no, sharing Chris it with Paul were playing, Jordan Clarkson, George yeah, Hill, Isaiah right. Thomas, like he, seven he, guys. He's yeah. not sharing it with anybody. Mr. Calderon, if, if Chris don't forget Paul about him. If Chris Paul were playing with LeBron, LeBron wouldn't average the assists he's averaging either. So you're saying every first place vote goes to James Harden. Not one to LeBron. My, my point is, I, I don't wow, know, that it'll, an Ohio I don't know guy. that it'll be that. But my point is just this. I don't see how you argue that James Harden isn't MVP. If you're a voter, I don't know how you put somebody else's MVP ahead of James Harden. As I said, quarterback of the highest rated offense in history. Quarterback of the best team in the league as far as record. Okay, well, wait a sec. Russell Westbrook Great last individual year, statistics. I believe, was sixth in the West. Because he averaged a triple-double, which is something we had never seen since the 1962 season. Okay. That's, the, that's why it was an aberration. It was a statistical mm-hmm. anomaly. That's the only reason you can win it without winning so a high number of games. So who did you vote for last year? Westbrook. And your vote is going hard in this year? Yeah, no, without question. What about the year Steph Curry was uh, unanimous? You voted from that year, right? <laughs> Steph Curry. Yeah, I had to get in a... I got to pump well, up Steph Curry, a, man. But I'm saying, what's that? how's that a jab yeah. at me? I, I love I, Steph. It's not a jab like, at you. I, like, I, just, I just think Steph Curry This still... is where you ruin your arguments. You you do okay early, but then I, you just go... I'm a closer. You, you have closer. nothing to say. No, you're not a closer. I was trying. You have nothing to say, and then you say something corny or, no, or just man, completely irrational. All right, fine. Let's Let move. me give you this. Let me... Let me say this. Look, am I arguing that James Harden is having the season Steph Curry had when he averaged 30 points a game and they won 73 games and he was unanimous? No. No, I would hope not. What I am arguing is this. Steph Curry should not have been the first unanimous vote. Should have been Michael Jordan. Well, it it could have been many players. Look. That that's where you're. I think you and other people get caught up in is there's only been one unanimous in history. We Harden hasn't been as good as that. He so Harden he can't hasn't be been unanimous. as good as he was last year. But my year. point is this: unanimous. You will see more unanimous MVPs in the future. And here's why. I don't know. The, look, you can't tell me there's a year Michael Jordan shouldn't have been unanimous or LeBron James shouldn't have been unanimous or Kareem Abdul-Jabbar shouldn't have been unanimous. There are many years so when So what guys, has changed in the mindset, th- This Chris? is what okay. has changed. In, back in the day, we didn't have as much information as we have now. Nowadays, writers, you don't, if you're on the East Coast, you can still you can watch every game. I can watch every team play. I can watch every player play. I see not only the normal statistics, traditional statistics, I can look at the analytics. I can read the articles from every beat writer for every team. Now, I know more about players around the league than I ever could have known 15, 20 years ago. And so now, where back in the day, if you were an East Coast writer, you, you barely even saw the West Coast players other than when they came to your city. The, inf- the statistical information wasn't as heavy. So you didn't know as much about all. You just knew their name, their stats were great, but you didn't know as much about their game. Okay. And I think because of the TV shows like Undisputed and so on and so forth, because of 24 hours a day talk radio, there has become more of a consensus of what the MVP award yeah, is about. But Chris, you say now that. Now people and- feel like it, you need a certain number of wins, unless it's a statistical anomaly, right. like a triple double, and you ha- and it's about your individual dominance and team okay, wins. Okay, but th- th- that's Before, the thing. Before that that's wasn't fl- the case. Okay, that's a great argument, but it flies in the face of everything you said earlier. We gave it to Westbrook last year. He averaged a triple-double. You don't need to read everything. You just look at the stats. This year, James Harden, number one offense. James Harden, the best player on the number one offense. Let's give it to him. So what you're saying doesn't jive with what your pick is. Because if it's going with everything we're reading and everything we're seeing, to me, LeBron James has to be the MVP. He is having a career year at 33. He's not having a career year. Career high in assists. Career high in rebounds. Averaging 27. Yeah, those are career numbers. Then his 15 he year does that every brand, year. No, no, no. He's you got gonna, a brand new team you, from last year. You're gonna tell totally me. Totally new you're team. You're gonna tell me one or two assists more and one or two rebounds more a game is changing well, the when you his lose PER, Kyrie Irving and then you PER, trade six guys in February. His PER is not close to his it's career. It's impossible highs. when you gut half your roster at the trade deadline. No, it's not. Oh my gosh. All right.
Fine. He was he wasn't good in January. That's a whole month. He was, it was his where lowest he wasn't good. month of his career or second lowest. I, I would agree. Okay. So as how's the team that a career was year? imploding. Yeah, he had one bad month. Remember in December. That's not a career. LeBron December. James has had most most of LeBron James's career. He's never had a bad month. Leading into December, Christmas break. LeBron was one of the MVP candidates. J- bad January and boom, February, March, he's right back at the top. But it was I mean, a, we're just going to disagree. Did here. James Harden have a bad month? No, he, I think he's had a good, good year. But LeBron good, has been good. LeBron was good, bad, and amazing. Good? Harden's not amazing. Last year, leading he was, the league in scoring, leading your team to the highest rated offense again, of all Mike time, D'Antoni. leading your team to the best n- record in the well, league. The Warriors have been averaging all eight, and hey, by the eight way, and a half. The Warriors a were number one in the West until everybody on their roster started getting hurt. So, are they number one now? Everybody's That's not hurt. Matters. Everybody's hurt, Chris. All you, right, let's there's move on. no way James Harden is not the MVP. You heard Kevin Durant right. say it. You heard oh, Kevin Durant, the authority it. on MVPs. Let's there's move no on. Way. All right, next question. Sticking in the East, uh, you've gone on a lot of TV shows this week, pumping up the uh, Sixers. They can get to the Eastern Conference Finals. I don't think anybody would disagree with that. I've got any against any team in the East, with the exception of the Cavs, they're going to have the two best players on the floor. Kyrie Irving is hurt right now. What about Milwaukee? I would take Ben Simmons and, and Joel Embiid in a playoff series over Giannis right now. I know it's early. I would. Why? Um, so I actually why? think. Well, I, I love How Embiid's inside-outside game. Why would you game. take. Uh, Embiid's fine. Why would you, at this point, why would you take Ben Simmons over Giannis? I mean, I for think. For this year. I, I would yeah. take him going forward. That's a, that's a but fair, for this year, That's why? a fair statement. Uh, ben Simmons, by the way, a lot of rookies. You know, he, Ben Simmons, 21-year rookie. Hit the rookie wall. We saw Lonzo kind of hit it. Okay. And they plow through. Ben Simmons has gotten better as we've got. I mean, March, he was incredible, okay? Five triple-doubles in the last 10 mm-hmm. games. Career high, I know it's just one season. He averaged over 10 assists a game in March, okay? He's gotten Dario Saric better. Everybody seems to get better playing with Simmons. And, you know, again, we don't know what's going to happen in his first playoffs, but I love. I would take Simmons over Giannis. At any rate, my point is, I don't know why you're stopping at the Eastern Conference Finals. I believe the Sixers... Uh, let me give now, you two, well, words, uh, two words. Two words. One word. LeBron, LeBron James. James right. uh, yes, I would. I think the <laughs> Cavs will be favored. I would take the Cavs. But I think the Sixers can get to the to the NBA Finals this year. I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. Listen, the Cleveland Cavaliers coach, we don't know what his status is. Ty Lue, you know, this, we're recording this He'll on Tuesday. He'll be back Thursday. He's supposed to be back. We'll see. They've been hot without him. We would agree with that. Whether he's there or not, they're going to be fine. Well, I mean, the game the, the game before he left, LeBron was seen yelling at him on the bench in Portland. He wasn't at yelling at him. Uh, I look at the East. Ah, the nobody scares me if, if – Okay, sure. Nobody scares me in the East. If uh, the Sixers, with the exception of LeBron James, and we don't know Kevin Love's status. He's been touch and go. I, I think the Sixers. Now I don't think they're Kevin favorite. Love's I status. think the Seventy Sixers can get to the NBA Finals this year. Look, Cleveland is head and shoulders above everybody else in the East. When it comes playoff time, you will see that. Now I'm with you. I love Philadelphia. I think they are the team going forward. I think if I'm LeBron James and I'm leaving Cleveland, if I leave Cleveland, I'd love to see him stay. If he leaves Cleveland, he should go to Philadelphia. Ooh. If you want to win, if it's about winning. But right now, I think the Sixers are too young to get to the finals. Okay? Now, it's happened in history. Shaq and Penny Shaq were young. Shaq and Penny, yes. But I, as much as I like Joel Embiid, he's not Shaquille O'Neal. Shaquille O'Neal was giving you 29 points a game, 13 rebounds back then. He was wildly athletic. I mean, he was a different animal. Um, Jordan, and now let's be clear, and, that and was even, one of the even years. Even Ben Jordan. Simmons, as great as Ben Simmons is right now, he's not as good as Penny Hardaway was at that stage. Penny had some college years under his belt. Penny was phenomenal. But the so, parallels of the East back then was weak. Michael Jordan only came back for the half the season, Jordan remember? Jordan himself. Right. So the East was but down. LeBron's this himself. This East is very weak. Right now, yeah, again, I, we're look, on Tuesday. I, I'm, with you, I'm se- with you in that they could beat anybody else in the East. So they you're saying no chance. Cleveland. Okay. Let they me just go through Cleveland. the path to the, to the finals. They would have to beat, as of today, the Pacers. They don't scare me. Oladipo, amazing. Well, hold on. Here's... If Embiid isn't back, well, that, they yes. can lose well, to the Pacers. That's a big if, but we anticipate him coming back. Hopefully. The Toronto Raptors, good. We know about their playoff utility. Again, Simmons and Embiid on the court at the same time are better than anybody Toronto can trot out. And then Cavs in the finals. We'll see if they have home court advantage. Philadelphia. Even if co- they don't, they're going to beat Philadelphia. Okay. LeBron uh, James is not going to lose to 
a rookie and another guy who is Embiid essentially a rookie in the playoffs. That is not happening. That's so, why. So look, you can't beat you. them, but you're 100 percent sure LeBron should go play with those young guys next year if he leaves Cleveland. Well, if, if he, he's, if he's he, talking he, out of both sides, how? Of how am I talking out of both sides? They got no shot to be Cleveland, but yeah, LeBron, you should consider going there. What? Come on, what? What is that? How are those related? I don't you, think you're you saying understand. that they have no chance to they be don't. Cleveland. None, none. So why should other he go than there? just the anything can happen logic, which things do. I mean, the Golden State Warriors lost in the first round with Steph and Clay to the Clippers, four three. The next year, they win sixty seven games and go to the finals. They went from crawling to sprinting and winning a championship. It can happen. Philly you hasn't even Orlando. crawled yet. They're Honestly. crawling now. No, but they haven't crawled in, in the, the playoffs season prior yes, we, to this. That's They've fair. never made well, the playoffs. Well, J.J. Redick is on the roster. We know he knows a bit, a bit about the playoffs. Um, Markel Fultz is back. Maybe he'll be a little healthier. He is a rookie. Uh, but I, I just don't see. Look, I, I love Philadelphia. I think they can get to the Eastern Conference Finals. They cannot beat the Cavaliers. No, sir. Okay. No, and, and that has... And how that means that LeBron should not go there means n- that that that's totally illogical. Okay, if LeBron James leaves Cleveland, say they get to the finals, they beat Philadelphia in the conference finals, and he gets to the NBA finals, loses, and he wants to leave. How, why would why shouldn't he go to Philadelphia? Well, then we get into the whole injury history with Fultz and Embiid and well, Fultz, Simmons. Everybody I, getting hurt. Everybody Marquette getting hurt every Fultz year. To be a great let's, team. Let's just keep LeBron going to the Lakers, okay? So I can look like a uh, prophet when we get you there. won't. All right, a lot of uh, let's let's go. That. No, I said it first. No, you and last June you can no, look it up on did. Cowherd's show. All right, let's close on this one. The biggest story in the NBA: the San Antonio Spurs. Obviously, Kawhi Leonard's not playing. We haven't heard anything from Kawhi Leonard. Now, you obviously are a connected NBA reporter. Maybe you've talked to some folks. Chris, I, I don't know that this falls into the debate category, but to me, this is irreparable damage. Okay, You can't go into this offseason and offer a guy who hasn't played at all a Supermax when your training staff has been saying for months he's healthy and his staff saying, no, I'm not healthy. So if the Spurs aren't going to offer him the Supermax, he's gone. There's, you're not sticking around if they're not offering you the Supermax. Uh, I think this relationship is damaged beyond repair. I think it's over for Kawhi in San Antonio. Well, in talking to people on, on his side, um, it's not irreparably damaged. Um, they are a l- little bit baffled, actually, because their communication with the Spurs has been great. Uh, when he told them in January that he was going to get a second opinion after he played the nine games and still yep. felt the pain, they didn't do it in secret. They told the Spurs. The Spurs sent people with him to get the second opinion. Every time he's been in New York training, the Spurs have had trainers with him, including this, this past week. Uh, they've been completely on the up and up with the Spurs. And when they talk to the Spurs, when they see them, it's all good. Like, they're, you know, Popovich, the coaching staff, the management, they sit, feel like it's all good. Then when they see anonymous leaks anonymous sources in stories and they know their side is not saying it that's where they're like <laughs> what is going on why well, that's what's a little baffling to them now i talked as you heard on the interview i did with danny green he said that meeting with the players was the players nobody went at Kyrie or Kawhi. nobody accused them of being soft or even implied that they were just trying to find out what the deal is. Which is understandable. You, you gotta be totally that's understandable. understandable. I totally mean, Tony Parker's out here saying, hey, we play three on three, four on four. He looks great. He's fine. What's the holdup? Like, that's where we are with this. It's like, how are the how is a team and Popovich willing to go to the media and throw their hands up, yet they're like, hey, Kawhi, how are you? There's something wrong here, man. I don't think throwing your hand... Like, look, Parker's words were harsh. (laughs) Manu Ginobili's weren't harsh. Manu Ginobili's were were reality. Well, after that meeting... And people didn't know about the meeting when Manu's stuff yeah. came out. So it was like, whoa, what's but what, this about? But, but I'm saying his mentality was just the mentality any athlete should have. The Calvary's not coming to save us. The 12 guys we have in this locker room on the roster are the guys that are going to have to play. And if we're going to win, it's going to be with us. Now, if Kawhi comes back, great. But we can't be sitting around thinking, that's all right, Kawhi's coming back. He'll, we'll be better when he gets back. You can't win that way. So I thought what Manu said... 
made a ton of but sense. But these guys now, have been with him for six years. This is seventh year in the league, right? Yeah. He, he's been injured a little bit every single year. Never oh, played no, 75 I get games. That. At some point, it's like, dude, is this guy brittle? Is this guy soft? Do we not want to play? Like, you, that's, you, if you've been with someone six years on the same team in the same locker room, you kind of know if, they, if they're a little soft or not. I don't think anybody's accusing him of being I soft. I would hope he's not. You know, I mean, physically, he's one of the toughest, most imposing guys in the league for that size. So I don't think anybody's thinking he's soft. He is a guy that wants to be Kawhi when he steps on the court. And that's been from the beginning. He's never liked to play through nagging injuries, through pain. And so that, that's, that's something. Now, I'm with you. If I'm the Spurs, as much as I love Kawhi and as great as I think he is, I would be hesitant to offer that super max just because of the injury history, particularly this year. Because their doctors have been telling you yeah. he can play, and he's not playing, even though his doctors are saying no. So I get where he's coming from, and I'm with him can, on that. Remember how we did that role play one time where I pretended to yeah. be LeBron? You were Dan Gilbert. So we can do that again. I'm Kawhi, and no, you I want to be Kawhi. Okay, I'll be R.C. Buford. All right, all right. And, and this guy can be Popovich's pretend guy. You're coming in for the meeting. Hey, Kawhi, good to see What's you, happening? man. How's the quad? You good? I'm feeling better. You know, That's I'm just great. working through it. Um, Still got a little bit of pain. Uh, not quite ready, but, you know, Still, huh? I feel Still good. Still got the pain? Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right, so Kawhi, we you know... Getting, Jill- you getting smart, RC? Nah, nah, nah. We good, we good. So, uh, July 1st... <laughs> all right. I ain't July so. 1st is coming up. And, uh, you know, we've talked with the uh, the ownership here in the front well, office. July 1st. Hold on. Let's back... Time out from the the skit. Did I play in the playoffs? So, obviously, I didn't play no, in the playoffs. No, you play- didn't. Okay, I didn't no, play in the playoffs. You sat out injured. Okay. Well, um, hold on. <laughs> you say that... My <laughs> doctors have not cleared me. Let's move on, Kawhi. Right, so, uh, so July 1st is coming up, and, you know, in, in deep discussions here, we love you as a player. You're a franchise player. We can build around you. I'm sorry, we cannot offer you the Supermax, uh, 217, 219 million, whatever the number is, uh, just because of injury concerns. You know, you've been here seven years, injuries every year. This past year was very bad, uh, and we can't. We do want you with the organization. We, we love you. We respect you. We want you healthy back next year, but we can't offer the Supermax. Why not? Well, I just kind of laid it out there, Kawhi. <laughs> if, I'm injured, if I'm injured, I shouldn't be playing. It seems to me we have a uh, little disagreement here. Our coaching staff and our training staff said you've been healthy for months. You, are, you, you played three-on-three three with you, our guys. You, you played four-on-four four with our guys. You look great. We really wanted you back this year. And, you, you know, you couldn't come back. And we understand. Hey, have you hurt. talked to my doctors? Yeah, we have a good open relationship. Okay, did, and, they, did they clear me to play to no. you? No. So maybe okay, we should so, get a third group so of doctors. doctors are saying so I couldn't to play. To take our guys out and your guys out. Well, and we'll get another doctor. See, and how here's, about that? here's my thinking. Doc, NBA doctors, want, they have a vested interest in mm-hmm. getting players on the court. Obviously. <laughs> whether ready or not. We could have won a title with you this year. Yeah, but my health is more important because my long-term career, this is my career. You know, Isaiah Thomas, uh, the Boston Celtics doctors cleared him to play on his hip yeah. last year. That's unfortunate. And we saw, right? So so he shouldn't have been playing, but he was cleared. Mm-hmm. Okay? He went and got a second opinion, and then he ended up getting surgery. Yeah. Okay? Kawhi, Kyrie Irving, the, the Celtics had him cleared to play, but he decided to go get a second opinion, and then he had surgery. But Kawhi, you've been uh, getting me, second no, opinions since January, let me, let me keep February. Going. I mean, what, I know, what are we and doing they here? haven't cleared me. Grant Hill, remember Grant oh, Hill? Oh, such an unfortunate story. Yeah, Grant okay, Hill. but, but, but here's the thing about Grant Hill: when he was in Detroit, had a bad ankle. The doctors in the on the Piston staff cleared him okay. to play. So let's Hold get. On, okay, let no, me, you're no, making great RC, points, Kawhi. You've finish. done some homework. RC, let me finish. You did more homework than you did uh, at let, San Diego let, State. Let me finish. No, I'm joking. That's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Corny. You saying that? <laughs> Look, uh, Grant Hill was cleared to play by mm. the doctors in Detroit. We saw how that it ruined his NBA career. Ruined it. I know. Now is that what you want from me? No. You want me to be the best Kawhi I can be, right? Correct. So that's all I want as well. So when the doctors clear me, these doctors, not a team doctor, because okay. as I've pointed out, team doctors 
They have can an, make they have mistakes. An, uh, an, an I trust in, these uh, doctors. Okay. How about this? And once they clear me, you will get 110% okay. Kawhi Leonard. And just like I did in 2014, and I led this team to a title by winning finals MVP, I will do that again. Wait, no, no. But no. show me the money. Tim Duncan ain't walking through that door. So, Kawhi. You, 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 Tim Duncan was a shell of himself He was still Tim Duncan. You know that. You, we, you don't trust our doctors. We've got our issues with your guys. Why don't we get a third independent party and we'll look at it? Why well, are you up for and, that? And, no, I mean, it's well, a little bit okay, too late because we, we yeah, got bounced in the second the round point? by a bad Houston Rockets team. Uh, <sighs> but that's neither here nor there. Uh, it's a little late for that. I, we just Are you going to be cool with getting a little less than the Supermax? Let's see what's on the table. Let's see what's on the table. Okay. You know, I'm a humble guy. I, oh, I'm, that is I'm great to know. Okay, so we I can get through this. Table. I like... I like it here with the Spurs. I like the organization. I know we can win here. So you're so not going to pull Al Horford or Chris Paul and say, oh, you didn't give me that max money? I'm out. See ya. No, no, I'll, I'll see, I'll see so what So you don't want offering. us to trade you to Cleveland or anything like that? You don't want to play with LeBron? I, I love being here with yeah, the Spurs. Yeah, all right. I love being, you know, this is now my team uh, now that Tim is gone. Well, uh, you and DeJounte Murray. Great young player. Yeah. Well, I love DeJounte. Yeah. He's, he's my best friend on the team. He, he and Rudy Gay. So, one, you know, I we love, don't know if Rudy Gay is coming back. Building. Well, I, I would suggest you bring Rudy back. <laughs> just, just, <laughs> Thank you, you know. for that input, Kawhi. I, I, I would suggest I, I, got one year left, left, I got one year left on my deal. So I would suggest you do that. All right, just, cool. Just hey, great, great talking, Kawhi. But I'm, I'm, not, I'm not definitely out, but, but it better not be too far below I ain't mad at you, Kawhi. It's yeah. all good. <laughs> all right. Good job, <laughs> J-Mac. Uh, we didn't judge. We didn't grade well, We got to bring that back next week so I can uh, beat you again. Have you ever beaten me? I think every week. What? I mean, in the tally. Uh, we, you ever, we use the, the official, YouTube comments. In the official, we don't use no official score in here, the, man. Uh, but you I'm replace asking, them when, in a heartbeat if they don't back you up. When people compete, you typically keep score. Like when we play one-on-one? We never played. When we play. Oh, you you gonna play me? You challenging me to one on one? I've never played a college basketball player one on one. Well, I'm I'm a former college basketball it. player. Let's do it. All right. You think you can beat me one on one? I am not a good one on one player. I think I can hold my own. Yeah. Why? What in the world? I played in college. You didn't play in junior. Didn't high. Didn't play high school, college. Why B A? Why I was an intramural that. champ, but that's that, that doesn't, doesn't count. Yeah, that doesn't that, really you're mean right. Much. That doesn't mean anything. <laughs> um. What what makes you think a guy that never played organized basketball in his life, and and a guy that you know, what is this? You it's think me you up can be it? So I'm not even front. It's right here. I was it's right the, here. This great, My heart, great college will, You will player. never outwork me, Chris. What can Chris you Bouchard? do? What's your skill? We're gonna see on the can court. Can you shoot? I'm not giving you my scouting report. You got nothing on me. I got I tape on you. I, I looked care. up your highlights on YouTube. I know your weaknesses. I know what your tendencies. What am I? I'm weaknesses? a student of the game, what am I Chris weaknesses? Broussard. We will discuss that later. Can you later. shoot? Look at you. There's no, you can't. I'm sorry. I just don't, I, I do not believe you can hoop. Keep it disrespectful. I do, no, That's I just good. don't. There's nothing about you that says hooper. David, oh no, David versus <laughs> Goliath. There we go. I, I'm little David. I'll roll up there. We'll have fun. D- look, there's nothing about your demeanor, the your look. Yeah, they said that about Kawhi Leonard your too. Your gear. That tells me you can hoop. And then talking to guys that have played with you, there's nothing I've heard. To tell me you can hoop. So you're one of those guys who shows up all geared up, look no. with the elbow sleeve. You're one of those no, guys. No, oh, not definitely. Like I'm not worried now. Oh no, you, you, you. <laughs> last time you went to a Laker game, what'd you wear? I just wore a jersey. It has a, a jersey a with cut off with the sleeves. Suns out, guns Fist out. Up. I mean, come on. Yeah, yeah. Who does that? If if you beat me in one on one. I will never play basketball. Oh, well, again. then we can't play. I, I don't will want never you to retire. play organize in a league again. I have to shut you out or what? Just beat you. It beat me. Oh. Edge me. I don't want to re- you on to the, retire, on a man. Buzzer beater or whatever. I don't. A thirty foot heave. I, w- I If you keep talking, I'll shut you out. <laughs> I'll shut you out. I don't think I'll. be If shut we out. went to five, I would definitely shut you out. Because I'm I'm not in good shape. That's, if you got ball first, I'm maybe old, you could. I'm but. old. I'm I'm all, I might well. But if you miss and I get a rebound, it's lights out. You're kind of you old, that. too, though. You're older than you Anyways, look. hey, guys, thanks for so having me on. So now I think about it, I will shut you out. Because you ain't a young chicken. You ain't a spring chicken. Anyway, I've enjoyed this. This is a lot of fun. I'm going to enjoy spanking I can't, I can't you I can't wait for the comments on this one. one. 
Good job, yeah, as always. Yeah. You played a good punching bag. Oh, jeez. But there you have it. Knock down, Jay. Hope you enjoyed this podcast. Danny Green was tremendous. Knock down, Jay, was as usual, a lot of fun. And the top five coaches of all time. No disagreement for me on that, by the way. Phil okay. Jackson, number one. All right, all right. Well, look, go to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, and SoundCloud. Leave us five stars. Give us a great comment. And, of course, subscribe. We'll see you next week. We got a great interview for you next week. I'm not going to give it away, but it's a Hall of Famer. Oh. So you want to check that out. Peace from Jason McIntyre and Chris Broussard in the zone.